Hey everybody, it's Carrie from the Rapid City Public Library, your friendly neighborhood makerspace librarian. And this, and today we are talking about our practical making rainbow stitch sampler. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is kind of show you everything that you got in your bag, surprise, surprise, and then go through each of the stitches. Now you can use any one of these stitches for any color, for any layer of your rainbow. Um, but I did mark on your instructions which one I used and which color in case you like one of them and want to try that one first or you like one of them and decide that's the only one you want to use however you want to do it. So without further ado, here we go. What did we get in our bags? Well, you should have gotten a set of instructions. You should have gotten uh, an embroidery hoop, a needle in that bright orange felt, all the colors of thread that you're going to need. Um, a piece of tracing paper with a pretty rudimentary rainbow kind of sketched out on it, and then your fabric. Now if you take a black pen and you go over where those lines are and poke a hole sharp enough so that it goes through the tracing paper and leaves a little dot or a little line where the lines are on your tracing paper, that will give you a template for when you put your fabric into your embroidery hoop that you'll just be able to sew right along. Most of the stitches um, I'm going to show you on a line of dots or a line, so that can be really helpful instead of just kind of trying to eyeball it as you're going along. So here we go. You can see I've put this line of dots on uh, my sample fabric here. I have threaded my needle and we're going to come in from behind. And I have a double knot in the end of my thread. And for this running stitch, we're basically going to go in and then very quickly bring it back out again. So it's going to be a very small little bit where the thread is behind the fabric. So it's going to look like that, a running row of stitches that look like that very small break in between. Okay. And basically you're going to continue like that for whichever line you choose kind of going along the length of that line i'll show you a couple more um, but basically this one is nice easy simple gives you a good solid straight line okay i'm going to zoom in a little bit for the orange and this is going to be our back stitch so after you come out you're going to go in and you're going to come back out almost as though you're doing the same stitch we did before but with equal parts in and out and then we're basically going to go in behind the line and come back out in front of the line so I'm going to go in with my needle right where the stitch before ended and I'm going to come out an equal distance on the other side all that so you guys can kind of see and you're basically going to do that again and again and this one is really nice because you're going to get a solid stitch always pretty much backtracking one and then jumping forward two um, and it works so well if you are doing a curved line or something that's round or like lettering it follows the curve of a line really nicely All right, third stitch we are gonna be doing is called the split stitch. So I'm gonna go and make a normal size stitch length. And now I'm gonna come back in about halfway down that stitch. And you wanna make sure that your needle is going to go through the little threads that make up your embroidery thread. You're gonna come in, you're gonna split that stitch that you did before, very aptly named. Then you're gonna jump forward about the same length. Pull it through and you'll know where to split that stitch because it will be where your first stitch has ended. So after the first one, it, it practically tells you where to go, which is handy and nice. And this one is gonna make a, a little bit thicker line than that back stitch that we used for the orange. Make 
sure that that actually is in between there. And that is how we're going to do that one. Okay, next up the chain stitch, which is one of my favorites. So after you come in, you're going to make a loop. So I like actually take my thread and kind of form it in a loop so I know what I'm doing. And then I'm going to go back in almost right next to where I came out. And then you want to make sure that when your needle comes back through, that loop that you made with your thread goes under that needle. Because where your thread comes back out is what's going to make the chain. And when you pull it tight, it should look like that. So again, I'm just going to kind of make a loop on top of the fabric. I'm going to go back in just right next to where I came out. And when I pull my stitch, I'm going to make sure that my, my needle is basically going through the middle of that loop that I made. The loop will go under where my needle is coming out. And that's what's going to make the chain. And you can leave these looser or pull them tighter however you, you want to do that. Totally a matter of personal preference. So that one is a little bit looser. They'll look a little bit bigger if that's what you decide to do. I'll show just a couple more here because this one's just a little bit trickier than the other ones. Okay, now for the blue, I have decided to use the French knot. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it around our needle twice. One, two, and then I am going to insert my needle pretty much right where it came out and pull it through and it's going to make a nice little French knot. And that one is kind of small. If you decide that you want to try a bigger knot, um, I'll show you on this next one, you can loop it three times around your needle. Um, so that's a matter of personal preference as well. So pull all the way through. If this one I'm going to loop three times, one, two, three, and you'll be able to see how it's going to make a larger knot for this one. So that's kind of up to you how big or how small you want to keep those. But I will do one or two more here so you guys can see. Just right back in. This is a really good one to use if you wanted to outline a particular shape too. I've seen some really cool embroidery with, with that done. Okay. Then we're going to move on to our purple thread. Um, and this one is kind of like a knot, but kind of like a chain. <laughs> a little bit of everything. So I'm going to go ahead and, and make a normal stitch, like I was going to do a running stitch. And then I'm going to come back in sort of right next to, right above, where I put that stitch in. So it's sort of just to the left of it or just above. Now I'm going to make a loop, almost like I would do a chain stitch, but I'm going to push my needle through the first stitch that I made. Now I'm going to make another loop, like I was going to do a chain stitch. I'm going to go under the first stitch I made, and then down under the second stitch I made too. And then I'm going to pull it through. I'm not going through the fabric here, I'm just putting my needle underneath the stitches. And then when you pull it, you have kind of a, a fancy knot. We're basically making, um, instead of individual knots in a row like the French knot, we're doing, um, these knots are kept together more, like a chain of knots almost. Okay, so you've made your stitch, now you're going to come in just a little above or a little to the left of the bottom of that stitch it through and I'm gonna make a loop like I'm going to do a chain stitch but instead I'm gonna pass my needle through the 
the first stitch that I made. Not through the fabric, just underneath that first stitch. I'm gonna pull it, and then I'm gonna make another loop, like I'm doing a chain stitch, and I'm gonna go under my initial, and then under the second stitch that I've made. And I'm just gonna kinda chain these knots together. And I'll do that one a couple more times as well. And like I've said, you guys, you can use any of these stitches that you want. You can use them all. You don't have to use them all. Um, use whichever ones look the prettiest to you. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to stop by the Makerspace or send me an email, and I'll be happy to try and help out. Um, but this is kind of just giving you the tools to be able to make whatever you want to make on your fabric, in your embroidery hoop, which if you really like it when it's finished, you can feel free to hang it up on your wall or you know pick it all out and, and try something again. Um, but it is kind of enjoying and relaxing, and I hope you guys enjoy this as well. So hopefully that gave you an idea of kind of what you want to do on yours. Um, a couple things real quick before I go. Don't forget summer reading is in full swing around here. So all you have to do is go online or stop in and pick up a bookmark. All we want you to do is write down what you are reading. We don't care how much you're reading it. We don't care how many things you're reading. We just want to know what you're reading. Turn that bookmark in before we close on Saturday and you will be entered in our weekly drawing. And there's some pretty cool gift certificates and some pretty cool prizes in those baskets. So if you're interested, get a bookmark, join in our adult summer reading program. Thanks guys. See you next month. Bye.